Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for Simon Says Stamp with a slimline home sweet home card featuring components from the July 2020 Simon Says Stamp card kit called Home Sweet Home. One of my favorite things when I opened up this kit and saw the 6x8 Home Sweet Home stamp set included was that this long little uh, street is actually perfect for the really popular slimline style of cards. So I decided to take one of my favorite dice uh, die sets that's slimline. This is the Lawn Fawn Large Slimline with Sliders, and we're going to use that large rectangle from this kit. It measures three and a half inches by eight and a half inches, so it's going to completely cover the front of a slimline card, and we're going to build a whole cityscape. This entire thing even with the dimension that I'm going to add with some glossy accents and some Nouveau crystal drops and coloring and stamping and all of the things, it's one layer. So this is gonna be completely a single layer card and we're gonna build this darling little village or little town street on here. And there's lots of options. Um, you can kind of do a day or a night scene if you want to. There's lots of fantastic sentiments. There's the cute airplane and a couple of options for the banner coming out the back. Um, clouds, sunshine, moon, stars, birds. Really, really cute. So I love the stamp set. Um, I have another video coming on the Simon Says Stamp blog next week that I want you to be sure and check out as well for something completely different with this same stamp set. So this is some of the Nina Smooth White cardstock included in the kit that I have cut with this slimline die. And then I have placed the majority of my images in my Misty. So I'm starting by stamping the cityscape and the airplane. Then I'm going to clean these really well and I will switch to some other images. So we're gonna have the banner um, I want to do clouds and sun, but there are going to be a few things that need to have a mask. Um, I'm by no means masking everything in this card design. Very, very little. So just kind of the top of the building clear on the left side of our city. I want to mask off the top of this so I can it can look like the cloud is back behind it. And then, actually, I think most of the masking comes from this area over here because we're going to mask the top of that building, we're going to mask the first cloud, uh, the second cloud, and then have the sun in the background. And I'm building all of my stamping first before we move on to the coloring portion and the embellishing, and then adding our stamped and embossed sentiment. There will be one additional small masked item on this card. Um, probably wouldn't have to mask it if you didn't want to. Um, I ended up masking it just because I felt like it was a little easier to color that way. And you'll see what I mean when we get to that point. And that's gonna be the little heart that I'm gonna add at the end of the sentiment. Now this video is fairly long. I have tried to speed up the coloring portion of my video but I did leave in the coloring. So if you're wondering how I colored all of this, how I added the color to everything, um, if coloring is just your jam, then this is a great video. Um, using Copic markers, I've kind of been using my Copics a lot lately. I know I had quite a few of you asking for more videos with Copics. Um, so hopefully I have been providing that for you guys. I also have um, the new Karen Brush Marker Pro markers that I will be sharing using those in a video next week with some new card projects. Um, kind of the first time for me using them. I know they've been out for a while, but I'm really excited to be able to offer that as well. Okay, so we almost have all of our stamping done. You can really see how the cute little village is coming to life. I mean, this is just such a fun stamp set and works for so many different occasions. I have to say, even though I use no matter how far apart, you're always in my heart sentiment for this card, 
My favorite sentiment on this card is home is where the Wi-Fi automatically connects because preach how many of us <laughs> that's so true because it's can be frustrating when you need your Wi-Fi anyway I thought I think it's cute and funny and my other card will actually feature that I'm sending the other card I'm, I'm sharing next week on the Simon blog I'm gonna send that to my oldest son because I think he'll think that's hilarious he just moved into his own apartment and had you know had to go get all of his Wi-Fi and all of that so I thought he would think that was hilarious Anyway, I am going to start by coloring in my background now. Um, I don't always do this. A lot of times when I do scene building, I will mask off the whole thing and um, ink it, or I will stamp and color with zigs for a little bit more of a watercolor effect um, with water-based markers that are a little more forgiving. Um, Copics are not going to be quite as forgiving in this uh, respect, but I really did want to use Copic markers, and I do love the look of coloring in a big area with them as well. So I really wanted to show how I created a one layer, and I, I'll be honest, I did not want to mask this teeny tiny little scene. That is going to be a ton of little parts and pieces that I had zero interest in masking. Um, I love a good masked card, but not when the images are quite this small. That's just not my thing at all. So I always try to find something else I can do with that. And in this case, I'm just going to color around them with my Copic markers. I did try to work in fairly small areas before moving on to the next area. Um, I was kind of anxious to see how my buildings were going to look colored against the sky. So I did start coloring in this one just a little bit, just to give me um, a a bit of an idea and then I will go ahead and color in the rest of the sky. The colors I'm using are B12, 14, and 16. I think you could very easily turn this into a night sky and switch out the sunshine for um, the moon and the stars by just deepening and darkening the blue just a tad. You wouldn't even have to darken it a whole lot and I think that would be really pretty as well. So let's go ahead and color the rest of this in. I forgot to mention, I did mask off the outer edge of my card. So remember how I was talking that this is a one layer card. My goal many, many times with one layer cards is finding ways to make them look dimensional without them actually being dimensional. And this kind of die that we used perfectly lends itself to creating that kind of a look and that is the stitched border all the way around. So by masking off this from the stitch line to the edge, it's going to prov provide us with this great look of a matted piece on white cardstock. You wouldn't have to um, mask it off if you didn't want to. You could simply color up to that line and uh, stop, but I found it was easiest to not do that. And that way, if I color over the mask just a little bit, especially when I'm flicking and trying to blend out those colors up near the edge, I don't have to worry about it quite so much. I don't have to worry about staying inside the lines, if you will. So I found that was really easy. I did not put one down at the bottom. And that, there are a couple reasons for that. I original, originally thought I might do something different um, on the bottom edge of this card. And so I didn't add um, the masking tape or anything there. And I decided to kind of come back to that a little bit later. You will notice I did opt to do kind of some cool gray colors, almost like a road or something down there in the forefront of the card. It needs to be something dark enough to show up the white embossing that I want to do. And so I opted to do grays there, which I think work really nice because I tried to keep my little cityscape very colorful and bright. Once the blue sky is all colored, I did go in and color in some of the trees with G um, 21 and 28. And then the sun is Y08 or Y15 and 19, and I kind of pulled some of that out into the rays right over the blue of the sky. 
The clouds I did in a different color combination of blue with B01 and B000. And that's just to give them a touch of color. If that doesn't blend good enough, you can always take a colorless blender like I'm doing here and blend that out just a little bit more. Um, the rest of the trees are YG 13 and 17, and I think I forgot to turn the camera on while I did that part. And then I've kind of got some cool grays for um, accents on the buildings or um, the roof. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, just little pieces here and there. We're going to use cool grays. And then I did color in the rest of that first building where I was really anxious to see how it was gonna look. I went ahead and filled in the rest of that. And pretty much we're just gonna start filling in now from here on out. I do wanna mention windows in all four of the buildings. Those are gonna be B01 and B000, the same colors that I used for the clouds. Um, just to kind of give it the illusion of that reflective glass. Then we've got our cool grays. Just add in some detail here and there, make sure that everything is filled in. Um, I think that window treatment, I originally thought I would do yellow and it really did not work. So I just went back with my cool gray seven and covered that up. And then I'm just gonna take my markers in cool gray and we're going to color in the bottom part of our design. Again, probably wouldn't have to use some tape to mask this off if you don't want to. I ended up opting to add some the closer to the bottom that I got. I was really worried that I might um, accidentally just kind of flick into that area and ruin the look. I did use all three of these colors shown here to go from dark to light and get as good of a blend as I possibly can. Before I finish that, I did start coloring in a couple other things and then um, this is, I'm glad I didn't color all the way to the bottom because I remembered I wanted to use that cute little heart. So I'm going to add that right now into that space that's white. I did create a mask. The reason being is just like with the border of my panel, this kind of makes me not have to worry about going around it super carefully. I tried not to color over it a whole lot, but it does give me that peace of mind that I'm not going to completely color inside the heart area. And then I did mask off the rest of the bottom edge and I'm just gonna color this in and add all of my shading until I get that the way I want it to look. And this really is where I'm adding the rest of my coloring. Uh, if you wanna add some distressing to the street, some little light areas, I'm using the colorless blender. If you're not familiar with Copics, um, a blender in this case is not actually a blender. It's going to move the color away. So anywhere I have touched the tip of my marker along this gray border, it's going to end up lightening because it's moving the ink out and away from where I'm laying down that little spot. And it just gives the road a little bit of texture that way. Next, I'm using Y08. 15 and 19 to color in this house. And you'll notice that the houses are all gonna be rainbow color for the most part. Um, the rest of the rainbow comes in because our, our, house, our houses and buildings are gonna be red, orange, yellow, and purple. The rest of our rainbow comes in with a blue sky and then the green of the trees. So I love to kind of incorporate rainbows in a non-traditional kind of way, and this is one of my favorites when doing a cityscape type of scene. And you'll see that we're gonna go full on rainbow when we get to the little purple house at the end because it just lends itself really well to having a little rainbow detail. Let's go ahead and color that second building from the left orange with YR04 and 09. 
The top of this house and some of the accents are going to be in shades of red and some of the accents will be in gray. The windows again will have that um, look of glass with B01 and B000. This is just such a fun little image to color in too. Not a ton of blending is really going to be necessary here since um, there's pretty small images. So one or two colors, even maybe three at times, is about all you'll need. I did throw in touches of pink with some of the other little like water fountains and things like that. Um, it was a great opportunity to incorporate a little bit more pink. I'd already added it to the flag coming from that first building. The airplane is also gonna be red and aqua and the banner coming out the back already is. That was B, G, 32, 34, and 45. We're going to add some little gray details to the airplane and then of course as I mentioned some aqua details. We're getting close to being finished but I think this little purple house might be my favorite. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I don't always love purple. Um, I've been using it a lot more lately. I know some of you have even made notice and made mention to me in the comments that you can see I'm embracing it more and more. Um, this is one of my favorite color combinations to use for purple, and it's not actually a purple color. It is B63 and 66, so technically these are classified as blue colors, but I love them as purple. Um, I definitely think they have a little bit of violet to, tint to them. And then I colored the house with those, and you can see I'm adding this fun little rainbow border along the front of the house. It's my favorite thing on the card. It's such a teeny tiny little thing but it totally reinforces that rainbow feeling that I was telling you guys about that I wanted for my card. And it's just so happy and fun. Then we've got some little window shades, the windows. Um, let's see what else we have to color. Oh, the water fountain. For the water fountain, fun little tip here for that is that I ended up doing the, the water fountain in rainbow as well, but to make the it look more like water's coming out, I'm gonna take my colorless blender and move that ink away. So as I touch that to my paper, you can see it's lightening those areas. And then I will even add more detail to that in a bit when I'm completely done coloring. And we'll add some white pen detail. The final thing we have to color before we stamp and emboss our sentiment and do the finishing touches for our card is that little heart in the lower right corner. I am going to color that in with my shades of red, so R24, 29, and 46. Those are the colors I'm using today. And then we can remove our masks. So let's just pull those away and we're left with this beautiful white border that instantly frames up our home sweet home scene. Now, I would recommend if you are gonna go ahead and do all the finishing for this card right away, I would stamp and emboss your sentiment first. I knew I was leaving um, and so I actually, I had to go somewhere for a little bit and so I took my Nuvo Crystal Drops and White Blizzard, which is what I'm adding to the clouds, and Glossy Accents, which is what I'm adding to the windows on this and to parts of the airplane. And I went ahead and applied those products to my scene so that they would dry while I was gone. Please keep in mind, if you want to kind of finish it all in one sitting, this needs to be your final steps. I make note of that because sometimes if you're, you know, at the end of the evening or the end of your crafting time and you know that you're going to come back to something the next day, I always find that is a perfect opportunity to add any of those liquid kind of products at this time because they can sit and dry overnight. Um, that's my favorite time to add anything like that to a card. And then my poor glossy accents just did not want to come out. I hardly ever have trouble with it clogging. 
with this Scrap Perfect tip. For whatever reason, it was clogged. I had to take the tip all the way off. I managed to fix it though, and we were good to go for the rest of the card design and beyond. I didn't have any trouble with any of my other cards that came after this, so um, be persistent. I always keep some straight pins. I am a quilter, and so I always have straight pins around, but they're fantastic for unclogging things if you need them. Now, when this is completely dry, because you don't want to put this in your Misty when any of this product is, product is wet or it will get on the cover or the, yeah, the cover of your Misty, when it's completely dry, go ahead and put it in your Misty if you want to. You could also use an acrylic block, but I love to use my Misty so I can stamp it a couple times. This is a big, bold sentiment. And in order for I just think it stamps better if you stamp it a couple times with your embossing ink before adding the uh, white embossing powder, but it's completely up to you. Now, it is still wet right now. I used an acrylic block to stamp the birds in the sky. This also comes from the Home Sweet Home stamp set. Every stamp you see here, plus the greetings, all are from this one stamp set. So I've come back. It's the next day now, and or later on in the day, whatever. And I am stamping my sentiment with the clear embossing ink. I did stamp it twice because I really wanted to make sure I had a very good impression with my ink. I'll sprinkle on the white embossing powder and then we're just going to tap off that excess and heat set this to finish off the front of our card. I like to leave my sentiment in the Misty in case, once I've added the embossing powder, it doesn't look great, I can tell that I didn't get good coverage, you can always put it back in your Misty and stamp that again if you haven't removed your stamp because it's in the exact same space. I did not have to do that with this card, but that's a little tip that if you ever find that something you've stamped doesn't uh, look great after you have heat embossed it, you can go in and go ahead and stamp it and emboss again. So, so for the card itself, I thought it would be fun to use some of the cardstock from the kit. Oh, real quick, I did add white pin detail. I forgot that I mentioned this earlier. Um, this is where I added white pin detail. I'm going to add it to many of the parts of this uh, finished card just for fun little highlight just here and there throughout. So the card base. I decided to use some of the smoke cardstock included in the kit and do a non-white card base. Um, the gray is still light enough that when you handwrite a message inside, it's still going to be very legible, but I love the colorful card base of this. So I'm going to take that smoke cardstock and off camera, I trimmed it to seven by eight and a half inches. So you're only trimming a little bit off of the long side of the cardstock. You're gonna leave the short side alone. And then from there, I will take a score pal and score it in half at three and a half inches to make our three and a half by eight and a half card base. It actually comes together super quick and it's a great way to create your own custom card bases out of colored cardstock. And I'll show you that here in a second. And then I thought it would be fun to finish the inside of the card so that it looks as nice or, you know, has that completed a look, I guess I want to say. Here's that score pal where I'm scoring our smoke gray cardstock. We're going to just take another sentiment from the Home Sweet Home stamp set and stamp that inside with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. So kind of before, let's go ahead and put some adhesive on here. We'll put our panel down in place. And then if you use the regular size or a large size Misty, you'll be able to do this with your finished card. You can see how it kind of takes up the whole space, but you are still able to place it in your Misty if you want to make sure that your placement is exactly where you want it to go. And I stamped Love and Hugs Enclosed. 
I'm using a dry paintbrush to remove a few stray embossing powder flakes. We'll heat set that and our card is all finished. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Slimline Home Sweet Home card featuring components from the July 2020 Simon Says Stamp card kit called Home Sweet Home. The supplies I used to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Simon Says Stamps and Dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.